Let's start in today's lecture. We're going to talk about another couple of the book of Genesis. We're talking about the couples in the first book of the Bible. And today we're going to start talking about Abraham, the main couple of Genesis and the main couple in the Bible. And we'll be talking about the importance of choosing a role model, references, a point of reference. God says in his word, look to Abraham, your father. Look to, look to, keep those words in mind, look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Let's first understand why God places Abraham and Sarah as our reference when it comes to marriage and faith. When we talk about a point of reference, what is a point of reference? What is a reference point? A point of reference is something you use to judge other things by. You have a reference as a model, an example, a pattern. And by that point of reference, you judge something. If you don't have a point of reference, it is difficult for you to judge anything. First, you must establish a reference so that you can judge anything from there. For instance, some easy day-to-day -day examples of our everyday life. Let's say that your man or your husband is going to play soccer with some friends. And your husband plays well. More or less, he plays a lot, he knows a little bit, he likes to play soccer, but his friends are all clumsy. And so, you watch your husband playing soccer, and when you compare him to his clumsy friends, he's incredible. <laughs> he's, he's really good at it. He's awesome on the field. But... If your husband is going to play with his friends against the Brazilian professional soccer team, then all of them will look pretty terrible, including your husband, right? Because when your husband's point of reference, your husband's is his clumsy friends, then he's awesome. But if his point of reference is the Brazilian soccer team, he's just terrible, right? We see that. Many couples have problems during the initial phase of their marriage in regards to the way their wives cook their food because the man, if he came from his mother's house where his mommy was a wonderful cook and she used to cook that type of food he was passionate about, then he gets married and his wife doesn't cook as well. So for sure, he'll have serious problems with his wife with the food that she prepares because his point of reference of good food is his mother's. So he has a standard. Look, this rice you made is horrible because he remembers his mother's rice. On the other hand, if his mother didn't cook very well, then his wife cooks wonderfully. He will think he won the lottery. He married a chef. <laughs> they don't even need to cook very well. Right, if his mom didn't cook very well. Yeah, and you see that this also has another side, right? Because sometimes the person, they they didn't have any reference growing up. And this is much more common today than in the past. Most people today, they didn't have a good reference in their home, a good reference of marriage. So when they get married, you don't have a good reference. You have a bad reference, a person who perhaps you're, you know, you're a child of a single mother. You didn't have a father. You didn't see a marriage. So your mother did everything in order to, you know, to make things happen and to take care of the family. 
being a mother, a father, being everything. But she wasn't, you know, there was no marriage. So there's no reference. And then the person gets married. And then any, th- any little thing, they think that that's marriage. So they're not able to many times see things that are not appropriate, that the person shouldn't be accepting in their marriage. They don't know how to, you know, how to tell the difference between what is good, what is bad, because they didn't see it. They didn't have that reference. When they don't have a a good example, they don't know what a good marriage looks like. So how are they going to judge if their marriage is good or not? So you see the importance of having good references in life. This is for everything. It's not just for marriage, but everything. So that you'll be able to judge where you stand, how far close you stand from these references. So in our marriage, I had no reference of how it was to be a husband, someone who would pass security to his wife, a husband who would know how to deal with problems of of misunderstandings with his wife. I didn't know. My father didn't have this. He also didn't have a reference because he didn't have a father around. So he, so he already came into marriage without any reference. And in his marriage, as he didn't have any reference, he also didn't know what it meant to be a husband. Therefore, he made a lot of mistakes. He ended up cheating on my mother, destroying his marriage. He didn't have any reference, so he didn't know how to be a husband. And because of this, when I became an adult, since I didn't see what it meant to be a husband when I married Cristiani, even though she had good references. I didn't know how to reach her standards. She had a standard up here because she knew what a good marriage was like, because that was what she saw at home, but I didn't have that. So when I didn't reach her standards, she, what would she do? She would argue. She would charge me. You're not like this. You're not like that. And sometimes she would literally say, my father isn't like this. (laughs) My father's not like that. So that would upset me because no comparison is good. But because I didn't know what it was like, how was I going to do something I had never seen? First, you have to see it. You have to visualize it. You have to have a role model so you can make an effort and reach that standard, that level. Consequently, we see many people that are unhappy in their love life today because they never had that role model. Woman who didn't have a reference to show how to be a good wife. Men who didn't have a reference of how to be a good husband, to be a father. And so they just do things their way, right? They think marriage is based on feelings. It's like, oh, I like him or I like her. So we're going to get married. And they think that they will automatically know how to be a good husband or a good wife in their marriage. And the reference as well. You can, you know, sometimes even choose, you know, many times people choose. Oh, you know, my reference, I didn't have a reference. So my reference is this marriage or this person. The thing is that it's not just you to decide that you have a reference because, yeah, okay, you you want that. You want that marriage. You want that success. You want that. But it's not enough for you to want that. You know, when the when God says to look to Abraham, he was saying, look to him, not just for us to look and say, Oh, you know, how, you know, he was such a lucky man. No, it's for you to look, for you to understand. Look what he did. Look what he does. Look how he was, what, what God did in his life. So a reference in the sense of, that's what I have to do. This is what I have to follow. I'm looking there because I need to see that that's the, that's what I have to do. I have to do the same. So it's not just to look because many people do that today. Oh, I never had, you know, many times we, we receive comments. People say, oh, you know, you're a reference of a woman to me. Okay, good. But it's not just that. It's not just for you to choose your reference. 
and to say, I like her. No, it's not to like. We're not talking about liking or to be envying or admiring. Admire. It's not that. It's for you to understand that's what I have to live. What did he do? What, what did, did she What did do? they do? So I can also copy that. Yeah. And when I think about my mother, who was and is my reference of a woman, I think about what she does and what she did in her marriage, in, in the house with me, with my sister, with my brother. I take what she did, how she is, how she dealt with the problems, how she dealt with the difficulties in the house. All of that is what makes makes us have this reference. So this is how I have to behave. In other words, look and seek to reproduce what that other person did or does to get to where he or she is now. Where we fix our eyes to look is where we're going. Where you turn your gaze to, your vision is the first step to realization. You don't accomplish anything without first visualizing it. For example, you are now watching this lecture, and because at some point you became aware of this lecture, and you said, I will watch the lecture with Renato and Chris Thursday at 8 p.m. You imagined it. Maybe you even prepared your time. You prepared yourself, maybe even your schedule. And that's why you're watching it now. You saw yourself watching this lecture. That's why you're here watching it now. You visualized it. Same thing happens when you dress up in the morning. You look at your wardrobe, you look at your clothes, and you think, and you imagine yourself dressed in these clothes. You think, where am I going today? I'm going to work, or I'm going to a special event. So you see yourself at the event somewhere, and you think, how should I be dressed? So you visualize yourself in those clothes, and then you put the clothes on. Everything comes through your inner vision. Thus, God says, look to Abraham and Sarah. Look to Abraham and Sarah. Therefore, it's an intelligent act, a look of analysis, a look of examination. How did that person get there? How? For instance, us. We give our testimony, and it's not to brag about ourselves. On the contrary, we talk about our mistakes. There's nothing to brag about mistakes. We talk about our mistakes to show how we got out of them. So when we talk about our mistakes, it is to show the way out, that it is possible to solve them. Firstly, even though we were a couple in the church, even though I was a pastor, and she was a daughter of a pastor, we had problems. To prove that marriage problems are the most common things that exist. But it's not because you have a problem in your marriage and marriage problems are common that you have to say, well, everyone has those problems. So I just have to endure it because marriage is bad. No. You have to go one step further and think, how did couples that live well today who overcame their problems, problems similar to the ones we are facing, like the ones I'm going through now, what did they do to overcome them? How did that couple who suffered, or better yet, that spouse that was cheated on, how did they overcome that betrayal? So, so that those who are going through that can overcome it as well. In other words, look to reproduce, look to imitate. Paul said, be my imitators, just as I imitate Christ. We have to imitate success. It's not embarrassing to imitate success. It's not shameful to copy success. It's intelligent. You have to imitate success. You have to imitate good husbands. You men, you have to imitate good husbands, good fathers. You women have to imitate good wives, good women who are role models of how to be a woman. So it's not embarrassing. It's intelligent to have this reference because when you have a reference, you know where to go and the step-by-step -step approach to get there. That's the importance of looking to Abraham and Sarah. This is the first lesson we have about Abraham and Sarah. And they are role models designated by God himself. And they have a lot to teach us. Now, having said that, Cristiani, if there is Abraham and Sarah as role models, there are also bad references. People that all of us should eliminate 
from our vision, from our sight, so that we don't become like them. Because nowadays, there's a growing surplus of bad references in marriage. Many of us had them inside our home. So sometimes you have to look at your mother and father, who maybe were not good references of a husband or wife, and you have to understand, not blame them, don't accuse them, don't diminish them, because probably they didn't receive instruction. But you have to understand, I love my mother, I love my father, but in regards to marriage, I cannot follow their example. The example of Abraham, right? Because Abraham, he didn't have an example in his home. You know, the, the Bible shows that Terah was an idolater. The family of Abraham was. And he had married with other women. This is a fact. It's in the Bible. So Abraham, he didn't have a reference of a faithful husband to just one woman, of a faithful man to God. He didn't have this reference. So sometimes the person, they use this a lot. You perhaps have horrible references and you, you know, you say, I don't know how to be a wife because I didn't have a mother. I didn't have a father. I didn't have a family. I was abandoned. So the person uses these bad references as a reason to be the way they are. And it doesn't need to be like this. It doesn't need to be like this. Sometimes, you know, we're talking about having, look, having, have good references, look to Abraham and you, you know, you keep doubting. You keep saying, yeah, but in my case, in my case, Chris, Renato, it wasn't, it's not that simple like that. Then the whole thing starts, right? God says, look to Abraham. Yeah, but, but me, you know, in my case, my husband, and I went through this, I went through that. So meaning the person, they, they have that reference. God is giving them the way, but they say, no, no, I'm different. I'm different. So, you know, you, you, you keep holding on to the conditions that you have and say, because my husband is not an Abraham. How am I supposed to be Sarah if my husband's not an Abraham? Oh, but, but both of you, you know, Renato didn't have the reference, but Christiani had. So the person is always giving a reason why. And they, they stay in the same place. They stay stuck. Yeah. Say, talking here and they don't accept. An excuse. So they don't have to change. So they don't have to do the work they must do in order to succeed. This is the truth. But what this person has to understand is that you are not a rock. You are not a stone or a piece of wood that is fixed. If I take this pulpit here, this stone here is fixed. It's a rock. It doesn't think. It doesn't feel. It cannot do anything about itself. It can't change its essence or its nature. It cannot because it's a rock, a piece of wood. But you are not. You are not a rock nor a piece of wood. You are not an inanimate object. You have a head, you have a spirit, you have intelligence, which was given by God for you to change, for you to adapt, and you use it for work. You were not born. Nobody was born a doctor, an engineer. Nobody was born a teacher. You learn these things using your intelligence. And even so, you became a doctor, a teacher, an engineer, or whatever your profession is, despite perhaps not having a father. Maybe nobody was ever a doctor in your family. Maybe nobody was ever a teacher in your family. Maybe nobody was ever an engineer, but you became. Why is that? Because you used your capability. So despite those bad references, you can become a role model in your family. But you have to look to the right place, to the right people. So. For starters, you have at least a reference of what not to do in your family, of reference of what you shouldn't be like. You already have that. You have to know how to use it for your own good. My father was a bad example. Okay, so I already know what I shouldn't do. That's what I do regarding my father's example. I already know what not to do. Therefore, it's a good start when you know what you don't want for your life. There's people who say, I don't know what I want, but you know what you don't want. Start from there. Use those bad examples to determine what you don't want. 
So, by eliminating bad references from your family, parents, relatives, friends, did you know, several studies show that when a person gets together with friends who are divorced, the probability of that person getting divorced increases four, even five times more. I'm not saying you can't have divorced friends, but what I'm saying is that when you start seeing a lot of divorced people, divorce becomes normal to you. So if you, besides having a lot of friends who have gone through divorce and you start having problems in your marriage, divorce becomes a natural choice to you because those friends inevitably become references to you. So be careful with references from friends, relatives. Be careful with references that American culture imposes today. What type of role models does culture impose on us today? Who is a point of reference for women today? For all women. What is the reference and idea that is most popular and spread, exalted, glorified, glamorized, that's made famous by social media, television, and movies for women today? For sure it's not this, right? Because... <laughs> Because I'm, I, I'm super old fashioned for the world today. If I was a woman of today, you know, like, like today we see in the world, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, be calm. I, I would be talking over you. I wouldn't let you speak. I would be, you know, in charge here of this, this lesson. And I would want to be doing, be doing it now. I would say, why do you have to be the speaker? Why can't I be the speaker in charge? So it wouldn't be me. Right. And I don't mind at all because my reference is not that woman of today. My reference, like I said, is my mother. And in my reference, this woman that I see in my mother is the woman that I, that I see that Sarah was, the woman that God gives us as examples in his word are women who have had what to give. Because the reference that we have today can even look like a strong reference. You know, the powerful women, they do it. You know, what's the problem? I, I can be in charge. I don't, I don't need a man. And they seem very, very, you know, self-efficient, but they're not. The reality is that they're not. So you see these women who are so independent, full of themselves, you know, they're, they're saying all these feminist arguments that they have. And in another moment, they're crying in front of the camera, you know, even recording themselves crying because they, they, they're going, you know, they were going through, through a lot of abuse and they were abused and they were manipulated in the relationship, sad because they were cheated on. Hold on. Where's that woman who was so strong that seemed that nothing would put her down? So I don't want this. I don't want this fake, this fake Wonder Woman. I want to be a true woman. I want to live a life. I want to live, I want to be married. And I don't want to be bossy, to, to be in charge. I find it so much more simple to not be in charge because you're the one that's in charge. And if something goes wrong, it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand? So I, I, I'm following here. I'm helping. But we are in the same boat. You are my partner. But it's so much more difficult. This, this woman who is that woman of reference that they have, they have a, a life that is much more difficult. No, no doubt what we should do better what women have to do is look to the love life of those glamorous women look at their love life that's all you have to do that's all if what they are and what they show as a reference to success to have money to be independent of man um beauty and so on i do whatever i want i don't need no anybody if that's what you aspire to have is that what you want for your life then go ahead they are a role model to you but if you look at their love life 
often see that they've been married three, four, five times, or they never married but slept or had relationships, and now they are alone. They have a lot but nothing at the same time. If that's what you want for your love life, then okay, follow them. But if you don't want that, then they shouldn't be your role models. If your reference of a successful woman is a woman who's happily married, faithful, beloved, a real queen, then you have to look at another type of woman, which is not the one that's being presented to you by current culture. The same thing for men. What is the most popular type of man? Which is the type of man that is exalted nowadays? The type that a lot of guys idolize as someone they want to be. It's the man who's rich. And a ladies' man. This is the popular man today. He has money to flaunt, to spend with women, with drinks, with trip, with cars, with everything he wants, and it never runs out. It's the man who has a buff body, who is a womanizer. This is the type of man that's popular in society. So if you look at this man, you will see this. But look at his love life. Look at his love life. He's not married. If he's married, he has already cheated. He sleeps around, but he doesn't have one wife. He has had so many women, but he doesn't have one wife. He pays child support for several children, though, of course, some of them can, if they have money for the time being. This. This is the reference for many men. So society will not show you the true reference because popular culture, everything that's in the news, in reality shows, TV series, movies, books, all of that stuff, you have to grab it. And in regards to your love life, you have to throw it all away. That's garbage, garbage. If you bring this to your love life, you're going to copy what they do, but with one small difference, you probably don't have as much money. <laughs> and they are the singles. The poor version of, of all that. <laughs> the singles, right. They need to, to see this because sometimes you're even, you know, participating of the love therapy. You're in the church. You want to get married. You want no commitment, but you have this reference and, and you don't know it. So you women, and I'm talking here to women because I counsel many women, and I know how, they, how much they suffer because of this. And I'm going to talk about, you know, one of the women that I spoke to recently, she said, look, Chris, I, I, I don't have a lot of time to come to church. I have a lot of work. I work a lot. I work from 9 to 10 p.m. and all. And, you know, time, time is going by. I don't have a boyfriend. I don't see anyone for myself. I don't see anyone for me. And I asked her, but how are you going to include a man in this life? Because you don't have time for anything. From 9 to 10 p.m., you're working. Oh, no, because I wanted to buy my house, because I want to travel, because I, you know, you, you want something, but you want other things as well, many other things. Like the woman of today. The woman of today is like this. She wants everything at the same time. She wants to have a career. She wants to be fit. She wants to be amazing. She wants to have a child. But she's not going to have time for her child because she's going to work a lot because her career is taking so much time. So she wants everything at the same time. And she ends up not having anything. So sometimes, you know, you're, you're having this reference. You're having this, this reference. You're having that behavior. How are you going to ha include your love life in this life that is super busy that you don't have time for anybody? You only have time for your career. You only have time for, for your th things, for your beauty, your appearance. You don't have time to get to know someone. You don't have time. You know, even if you got married today, when is it that your husband would be able to see you? Would you be able to take care of your husband? You don't have time. She doesn't even know how to. She barely knows how to take care of herself. And the same thing with the man, Bernardo. The man says like this, no, because I need to work. I don't have money. I want to have a life. So they're having the reference of that rich man. Oh, because today women want a man who have a lot of money. So 
you know, they, they're having this reference, this bad reference, and they're running after that. But they also want to have the love life that doesn't, is not part of that reference. So meaning you have a re- bad reference. You want something that is not part of that reference. I'm not saying that you can't be rich, that be successful, have a career. No, I'm not saying that. But you need to make time for everything. So if you want, for example, you want to have a family, you women, you want to have a family, you want to invest in your love life, and you look at your day, your week, you don't have time for anyone. So you're going to need to to make some adjustments. You're going to have to say, you know what, so I'm not going to be able to buy my apartment now. I'm not going to be able to travel as I wanted to. I'm not going to buy a car then. You're going to be to need to have this, this balance because you want something that is not part, is not part of this that I'm talking about in, in the marriage. So if, if you don't have time for that, because I need to have time for Renato, Renato needs to have time for me. Marriage needs time. It's not just, you know, there at 11 p.m., 11 p.m. and 12 a.m. we talk. After that, forget about it because I have my career. Marriage is not like that, you know? So look at your references. Perhaps you're having these references and you don't even know it. We see, for example, in Abraham and Sarah, one of the main examples that Abraham shows us is that Abraham decided to be faithful to a single wife. His father was a polygamist. He had at least two wives, maybe more. But Abraham decided to be faithful to only one woman and a barren one. That was insane, total craziness at that time. Today, a couple who don't have children can be frustrated. But numerous couples today choose not to have children by personal choice. And it's not condemned by society or anyone. It is not frowned upon. And it doesn't compromise the future of the couple. But in the past, people needed children to guarantee their survival. Yet he decided that he would be faithful to a single woman. He would have only one woman and even compromise his future, his sacrifice. He was prepared to leave all his wealth because he was very rich to his servant. His servant would inherit all his wealth. He was ready to do this. Why is that? Because of this good character. I won't bring this pain to my wife. Because he saw what this cost to his mother. So I won't bring this pain to my wife. In other words, a man who inspired reliability. Sarah could trust him, who inspired security, good character, loyalty. He was loyal. He was ready to be with her until the end and give up his own guarantees for survival, for her. That is to say, look at this test of love. So that's why he's a role model, mainly him. Sarah was even a bit weaker than him because she pushed her servant Hagar to give him children. But he was determined that he didn't want that. So this brings us this understanding. What's necessary for a couple to last until the end? You have to be a person of your word. When you exchange vows with someone, what does he or she expect from you more than money, more than sex, more than everything? What does that person expect from you? The person expects the following. Look, no matter what happens, I will be with you. We're together. I'll be with you. We are together. This is what a husband needs most from his wife and what a wife needs most from her husband. We are in this together. That's what marriage is. It's your word, your promise. So 
Looking to Abraham and Sarah, we learn from this reference. Let's fix our mind on this starting from today. This is just the introduction. We will talk about them the following weeks, showing even more reasons why they are role models and what they have to teach us. Next time, we will continue this lecture.